This screencast is basically an introduction to the idea of work and how it relates to different types of energy. So to begin with, whenever you apply a force to an object and that object changes its position, in other words, you apply the force over a distance, then you've done work. And that work is simply calculated as the force you're applying multiplied by the distance over which it's moved. So the simplest case, the simplest case of work would be if you had a, say, a box and you applied a force of 10 newtons and it's on the ground and there's no friction or anything and you applied this force over a distance of, say, 4 metres, then the work done in this box is going to equal F times X, which is going to be 10 times 4, which is 40 joules. So 40 joules of work has been done on this box. Now in this first scenario, let's assume there's actually no friction or resistance at all. So if there's no friction, then all of the work done, all of the work done is simply going towards moving the object. So we're talking about this first blue scenario here. If that's the case, then all of the work we've done has changed or go into changing its kinetic energy. So in this case, this box will have gained, it will have gained 40 joules of kinetic energy. Okay, that's pretty easy, isn't it? Now, it becomes a bit more interesting if other things start happening and we, we change our, our scenario. So let's say then we'll change our scenario. Let's say now we're lifting a, a box. Oops, sorry about that. We're lifting a box above the ground. So I've got a box and we're actually lifting it. So the box is originally on the ground here and we're lifting it to a height of three meters. So once again we're applying in this case, we're applying just, the, just enough force to lift it without accelerating it. So it'd be the minimum force we need to lift it. And we're applying that over a distance of three meters. Now the minimum force you need to lift any box is simply, to, you just have to overcome its weight force. And so this box was say, um, let's say it's five kilograms. It's a five kilogram box. And so the weight force of this box is going to be, by the way, we'll take G equals 10 just to make, make it nice and easy. So the weight force is going to equal 50 newtons. And so the minimum force you need to lift it will be 50 newtons. You just got to overcome that weight force. So let's say then that the minimum force we've applied to lift this box and we've lifted over a distance of three meters. Well, we've done work, haven't we? We've applied a force of 50 newtons on this box and it's been moved a distance of three meters. So the work done on this box when you lifted it was the force we applied to move it, which is 50 newtons, multiplied by the distance over which it moved, which is three meters, which is 150 joules. Now, if we're doing work on an object against gravity, and this is what we're doing here, we're lifting something up, so we're doing our work against gravity. So in this case, what's actually happening? 
the work that we're doing isn't going to kinetic energy. What it's doing, it's actually contributing to its gravitational potential energy. And so in this particular case, what has happened, if we've done 150 joules of work on this box by lifting it, then its gravitational potential energy has increased by 150 joules. So when you do work against gravity, it contributes to its change in gravitational potential energy. Remember when we, when we did work on an object where there's no gravity or no friction or anything, it goes towards its kinetic energy. Okay, just two other quick examples or two other quick scenarios we're going to look at. Any work that you do where friction is involved, then that, that work you do to have to overcome friction gets completely wasted. It turns into heat. So any work done where friction is involved, then the amount of work that is done against friction gets converted into heat. And we'll look at a, there's a more, there's an advanced example which I'll do with you in class, um, which looks at that. And finally, finally, if you do work against a spring, so let's say, for example, we've got a spring, it might be, it might be a plunger on a pinball machine, or it could be the spring in a bow. It doesn't have to be a coil spring, but it could be a spring, the springiness in the timber in a bow. If you do work against something where you're going to stretch it, where it's got a spring-like a spring property, then any work you do against the spring gets converted into a different type of energy which is called elastic potential energy. Now elastic potential energy is the energy stored in a spring. And that's why, for example, if you did, if you um, applied a force on this plunger, this pinball plunger, and compressed the spring, then the energy is stored inside the spring until you release it and then that gets converted back into energy of motion of the ball bearing as it's launched in your pinball machine. So that's a basic overview of the different type of work and how it interacts with, um, with different scenarios, whether it's acting against gravity or against friction or against the spring. Thank you.